Cool. We are live today on the SEO Leadership Webinar, and today we have a very exciting guest. We have on Crystal Carter. She is currently the Head of SEO Communications at Wix. Um, Crystal has been absolutely killing it. She's been um, speaking at many live events as well. She's been killing it online on LinkedIn as well. So we are so excited to have you on today. Um, we are going to cover advice to juniors, career growth hacks, personal branding, and so many more things. So if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and uh, we will get through to it. Um, a little bit of um, Crystal's background is that she has um, had 15 plus years of digital marketing and SEO experience. Her global business clients have included Disney, McDonald's, and Tommy, and um, Crystal is an avid SEO communicator. Um, she's also hosted SEO webinars and um, spoken at SERP's Up, the, uh, Up at the SEO podcast. Um, and yeah, you have had also work featured in Google Search Central, Bryson SEO, Moz, Search Engine Land, and so much more. So, Crystal, you have been busy. <laughs> so, thank you so much for coming on the webinar. How are Crystal you? Crystal does the most. I do a lot. Like I say, <laughs> always be, always be optimizing. I guess I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like talking about SEO. Um, and and I've been really, really fortunate to work with some incredible partners. I've mm. been featured in two different Google series, which were really a lot of fun. Um, mm. Shout out to Martin Split um, for, for that. And I, I did a course with SEMrush. And of course, I, I host a monthly webinar for the on the Wix SEO Learning Hub. And I host a weekly podcast um, that's available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. Um, and I write for write for our, our blog and I write for other publications as well. I've done a few Whiteboard Fridays and that's been been a lot of fun as well. I think my first question to you is, Crystal, how do you do it? <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> um, so, so I recently self-diagnosed as ADHD, which I think is fine. Yeah. Um, and I think that, to be honest, like it's a little bit of it, it's it's like it's a little bit of a superpower. To be honest, I don't think that mm. like I don't think that that one would be able to do all that stuff if you didn't have the ability to both pay attention to lots and lots of things and then hyper focus on other things. Um, yeah. So so, you know, I'm really curious about SEO. I'm really passionate about learning about how it evolves and and I'm really fascinated by you know what as SEOs we have an incredible insight to like what people are thinking you know people might say one thing but as SEOs we can see what they're searching like we can mm. see it so they mm. could say like they like what there was one time we were looking at, at a client and I think it was a they were a pajama client right they made like custom like bougie like lovely like Egyptian cotton like Mm, like really nice pajamas, like very expensive pajamas, like that you would lounge in. And um, and we were doing some keyword research for them. And I think they had like a boxer short set or something like that. And one of the keywords that came up was like men's undies. And I was like, I'm sorry, men, like grown men, you're searching for undies? Undies? They would never say that, but like, I can see it. I can see it in the search, you know? And so I, th I find that really fascinating. And I think that, you know, the way that we're going around, the way that that everything is evolving at the moment with AI um, being all over the place, with Google changing, with lots of new search tools showing up in the mix, like perplexity I use literally every day. Um, and Bing has become a player. Like Bing Bing gives me answers when other, when other search engines and even other LLMs don't. And I'm like, all right, Bing, okay, Copilot. Like they helped me today troubleshoot some code. I tried it on three different things and then I tried it on Copilot and they were like, yeah, this, I ran it through the thing and it was like, no errors. I was like, thank you, Bing. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Wow, so, awesome. well, that's, really that's amazing. Um, how did you, I mean, t talking about the journey of how you fell in love with SEO, how did you get into SEO and work your way up to where you are now at, as head of SEO at um, comms at Wix? So I've talked to people about this. Um, I think that one of the things that's important to remember it, when you're, if you are starting out early in your career, um, like you will have different jobs, but essentially because of the way, the nature of work at the moment and the way that, that, that work is, um, the, I, I always like to think of it as like your career is your job, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, like you're shaping your career is kind of your career because you'll, you'll move from job to job you'll have side projects. Everybody will have side projects, either something that you're like doing a side hustle that that's like, 
oh, you know, I have my social media empire <laughs> where like, mm -hmm. you know, by day, by day, I am a, I am a tax attorney and by night I am a mm -hmm. dance dancer on TikTok or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like people have yeah. like their whole, like I've got this recipe blog and like 300,000 followers or something, you know, people will have their side hustle. People will have, you know, different projects that where you're involved where like maybe you volunteer as a mentor for like a different group or like maybe you're, maybe you do the social media for your, for your five aside football team whatever it may be um but and everything you do it's like you know um it's it's like thanos you know you're collecting gems you're collecting <laughs> stones you're collecting yeah. skills the whole time and the llm ai age is really really fascinating but a few years ago um certainly when i started getting into when i decided to like niche down into search because i my career includes lots of marketing and I've done marketing the whole time, um, but when I decided to niche down into into um, into search into into SEO, um, one of the things I realized was that the best thing that you can invest in is here um, because chatbots and you know as as fascinating as amazing as one as wonderful as incredible as you know ChatGPT and um, Gemini and you know Bing Copilot and all these different things as as fascinating and wonderful as they are our brains are faster. Like they're still mm -hmm. faster right now. We still have, like our brains can fire at like all these different synapses and all this different stuff. And not only that, but we also have receptors. Your hands are receptors, your ears are receptors. You're, you know, like if you ever met a toddler who literally put everything in their mouth, like you've given them something and they're like, but can I eat it? Like, that's their first <laughs> question is like, can yeah. I eat it? And you know why? Because your mouth also has lots of different receptors. So like, there's lots of different things, our eyes, everything. Um, so, so all of those different receptors and all of the memories we have and all of the context that we have and all of that stuff, that all feeds into like into our brain. So when you're thinking about your career, like pay attention to everything you learn in every aspect of everything that you do. Um, mm -hmm. When I decided to niche down, so I, I had been working um, in marketing. I studied, you know, uh, Chartered Institute of Marketing. Um, I have a degree in, in English literature, which <laughs> at the time I thought was completely useless. But what English an English literature degree <laughs> teaches you to do is it teaches you to read between the lines and it teaches you mm. to read like what people are really saying. Yeah. Right. And, and like, mm. and also it, it also teaches you that like really you anything you look at, anything you read can be from, you know, multiple different angles. So I mm. might read a book and be like, I think that Jane Eyre means this. And somebody else is like, nah, -uh, Jane was talking about that. And somebody else is like, who cares about Jane? What about that lady in the attic? Like, and yeah. there's, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole different thing. And so that, that whole perspective and understanding that people, people look at different things. That's, that's been really, really useful. Um, even, th even though it wasn't directly <laughs> applicable, but during my, during my degree, I also, you know, did a lot of, um, I did a lot of research projects and I remember building a website as part of that. And I remember doing loads of stuff. And I was also like online, like all day, all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, during that, um, during that time. Um, so yeah, pay attention to all of those things. Um, and so I did, did loads of marketing and that, that was all, all, all really cool. Um, when I decided to niche down was basically, basically like I had been doing side blogs and I had been doing, uh, like different projects and I was driving traffic and driving, uh, engagement to these different projects that we were doing. And, um, when I went on maternity leave, I remember thinking like, oh, I did the thing, you know, have you ever seen that thing on Portlandia where they were like, she's making jewelry now? Have you seen that? It's like, <laughs> no, it's basically, it's okay. So yeah. I feel like y'all feel like I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that y'all, y'all are not parents yet. I'm going to assume. I'm like, okay. All right. So yeah. one of the things when you start encountering people who, who become parents that like, there's a, there is a, a thing that happens sometimes um, where people are like, I'm going to quit everything and I'm going to do something completely different. And then a couple of years after, after what often happens is people will come back. Um, and they'll go, no, I will. I am going to go back and do the thing that I did. But at, at the time I was like, I'm going to be a nutritionist. I'm going to do all the nutritionist things. And, um, and I've been doing freelancing stuff throughout, throughout all of this, um, and stuff. But one of the things that, that I looked up was like, how are you going to become, a, and I looked up like, oh, what are the things I need to do to become a nutritionist? And they were like, okay, so you got to study nutrition and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And I was like, cool, I'm ready for that. They were like, and then you have to market your business. And I was like, okay. They were like, and you have to do SEO. And I was like, okay. And you have to do this kind of marketing and that kind of marketing stuff. I was like, I'm already doing that. I'm already doing all of that anyway. I already know how to do all of that anyway. So why am I also going to add the stress of becoming a nutritionist and learning a nutritionist thing on top of that? So I was like, no, I'm just going to go straight into, into search. And one of the things that I love about, about SEO um, is that, you know, it's really tangible. 
um, brand marketing is really complex because not everything is measurable in, in brand marketing. You know, you can have a, and it's not measurable, measurable. You might not know the timeline of the ROI, for instance. So in brand marketing, things can include, you know, having a, having a, um, an engagement event, having, um, you know, a launch party, things like that. And it might be, that there's somebody who attended who later gets in touch with you, but you might not have even seen them on the guest list. It might be mm-hmm. that there's that there, you know, is something that comes up, comes directly out of that. But it can sometimes be a challenge to to um, to measure that. One of the things I like about SEO is if you do something on a website, or certainly historically, it's getting a little bit more complicated now um, in this, this post cookie world. Um, but um, in sometimes a lot of times with SEO. You know, if you do something and you say, I think if we change this web page, it will make us rank better. And you can measure that. You can say, I changed it on this day. And we saw and we start our rankings go up here to this, this. And, you know, and then those people who came to the website bought this thing or they, they you know, left their email or we can get in touch with them or that sort of thing. So the tangible nature of, of SEO, I find really, really satisfying. I also, um, you know, uh, as someone... <laughs> said as someone self-diagnosed with ADHD, um, there's definitely like the dopamine effect. Like basically like I don't need people to like, I don't need people to like to tell me that I've done a good job because I can see like I go on Google search console and it's like up and to the right. And I'm like, yes. And I can have a little, a little like, you know, party at my desk and I'm, I'm totally happy with that. And I can see that like, I got that rich result. I can see that that that's my hockey stick of that thing that I just did. And, and that all of that I find really, really tangible and really, really valuable. Um, from a strategic point of view, the other thing I, I find really useful is, again, because I come from a marketing background um, and because I come from this like English literature, like let's pull all of the elements together thing, from thinking about it strategically, it also gives you a lot of, um, a lot of uh, opportunities to like not stay in your lane. So mm-hmm. when you're when you're in SEO, very often it does not exist in a silo. Amanda Jordan, who's a fantastic SEO, recently just shared this. She was saying that her client had did something on TikTok, and that impacted brand searches for for you know a small um, a small like uh, car dealership. And that I find really, really fascinating. And I think the interplay between the things that happen online and the things that happen happen um, in real life and the things that happen on one channel and the things that happen on another channel, I find really, really fascinating when you're able to to bring all of those things together and and have a hypothesis, test your hypothesis, see the see the impact that I think is is really, really great. And that's something I've been able to do throughout my career. And it's something that that, you know, really um, gets me jazzed up every day. What's you you were mentioning about um, how you were tra- testing out um, things on Bing? What's your sort of uh, take on TikTok at the moment as it being its own search engine? So, so I find TikTok really fascinating. Um, TikTok of all of the of all of the uh, platforms that I've tried is the most the most elusive algorithm of all of them mm-hmm. because. Because like Instagram, I kind of get right. You got your hashtags. You got like you got the things. You got you got you know sounds. You got all these different elements. And if you put in the work on Instagram, generally speaking, you'll get the you'll get some impact. Yeah. Um, and and you know you can tell which things are signals, and people kind of know that algorithm. It's fairly fairly well well documented. Um, Google, I'm I'm all over that algorithm. And that that's fine. I, that makes sense to me. Um, LinkedIn, basically you just tag everybody <laughs> and, yeah, and, and then and then you should be fine. Um, so the yeah. LinkedIn algorithm makes sense. TikTok is so fickle. So I've recently gotten into TikTok in the last few months. And and what <coughs> happens with that is that sometimes, sometimes you post something and TikTok will give you like, they'll give you 200 views. It's my understanding and, and what I've seen um, from them evidence and what I've heard people talk about is you get about 200 views. They'll give you that just to sort of test whether or not this is like a worthwhile piece of content. And then sometimes yeah. you post it and they only give you six. And I'm like, what? I don't mm. understand why it makes no sense. Um, and then there's people who say, oh yeah, you like, you, and there are people who are trying to game it, um, which is, I think is interesting. So some people are trying to game it who are like, oh yeah, you just put all the hashtags on your, on your file and then you scoot it to the side and make it the same color and stuff. And like, that's old school black hat SEO. That's old school, mm-hmm. like make it a white, white text on mm-hmm. a white background stuff. That's what people are doing there. Um, so I find that that fascinating. I think in terms of in terms of a search engine, I think it's less a replacement for Google. And currently, I think it's more of a replacement for Twitter. 
So um, back in the day, Twitter, if the news broke about something like, for instance, like, let's say um, you wanted to see what was going on with the Georgia football game. We were just talking about the Euros just quickly. Um, and Georgia had a fantastic performance of the Euros uh, this this week um, against Portugal. It was a great game, like really just really fun to watch. Um, if you wanted to see what the goals were from that previously or what people were saying about about that game historically i would go to twitter and i'd say what are people saying about this georgia game like what's going on with that um and and there'd be lots of like really witty commentary and really interesting things that were going on there now um if you go to twitter it's pretty much it's just our x um it's pretty much just full of a lot of junk even when you find the content that you're actually looking for there's lots of people who are gaming it with stuff that's unrelated and you have to troll through things and it's really really difficult to find whereas mm -hmm. When news breaks, I will go to to TikTok and look up, you know, the the goals for the Georgia game, and it, you mm -hmm. can sort it by date really quickly, and then you can see in the comments lots of people saying, "Oh, this was a great game. Did you see that thing that happened?" And then they have the link to maybe to something else that happened as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, and I I find that 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 is really really useful um, in terms of in terms of of other knowledge. I think that that it is still quite young as a platform. One of the things about about um, about Google is that Google has a lot of legacy content and they have a lot of legacy data sets. So they have, you know, they, they, they will have search rankings for things that have ranked for years, for years yeah. and years and years. So they've been ranking, um, you know, websites, websites like Wikipedia for years and they know which pages people are looking for for Wikipedia. So if even if somebody hasn't particularly looked up that page in years, they can still surface that. Whereas mm -hmm. on TikTok, it, they're really dependent on what's there on TikTok. So mm -hmm. it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that doesn't have a big TikTok presence, that it's not going to be great, um, helpful for you. They're also yeah. not so great at their disambiguation. So for instance, if you try to do SEO on TikTok, if you try to look for SEO on TikTok, a lot of times you will either get, um, I, it's my understanding that there's somebody who's like a K-pop star or something who's who's involved, who's, whose name has SEO either in it or is their full name. And wow. then there's also, there's also TikTok SEO, which is slightly different from Google SEO. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so they, they're not entirely, you know, they're not entirely great at filter, filtering those, those things um, there. So I think that it's still emerging for some topics. It's really, really great. Um, and, and I think particularly for breaking news for stuff that's happening right now, it's, mm -hmm. it, can be, it can be really, really good. Like I remember when Rihanna did the Super Bowl, I was all over TikTok. It was a great place to, to <laughs> find all of the information on what was going on with that. Um, uh, but, but I think, you know, for, for things that are like, if you wanted to know how to fix a bicycle, um, and you wanted like a deep dive, um, information about it, YouTube's probably a better video platform for that. Um, and I think that for for news items you really really and for for sorry for like deep high depth or uh, in depth um, knowledge pieces you really have to find a really good creator uh, on mm -hmm. TikTok in order for it to be in order for it to be valuable I'm this is kind of a career podcast and I've I've seen some there's a couple of people I follow who are doing some great content on marketing careers for instance on mm -hmm. on TikTok and and who are really really um uh, really really uh, open with it. So Zoe Ashbridge, for instance, talks a lot about her freelancer journey on TikTok, and she's really open with, with that. And she's written for people like HubSpot and lots of other, other folks as well. So um, if you find someone good, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I think that it's worth validating it because there's also a lot of a lot of um, other wheels at play or other wheels in motion there. So um, there are a lot of people who are monetized and not necessarily declaring it very clearly. Um, or there are, yeah. there are, um, you know, groups of groups of folks who are using TikTok as a, that using TikTok collectively. Um, and again, this is, this is like old school black hat link, link building, like, or old school black hat SEO mm -hmm. sort of stuff where essentially people would have like, you know, they sort of have a collective of people of like, I'll share your content, you share my content, da, 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 da. And they kind mm -hmm. of do do that kind of thing on TikTok. So I think you have to be very, very, you have to have your wits about you on TikTok if you want, if you want actual um, you know, high quality information. Definitely. Awesome. And Crystal, I think what a lot of people will be interested in is your role at the minute, which is head of SEO of communications. Is that sort of from my understanding like a bit more commercial role than what you were previously? And how did you manage that sort of transition from like a hands-on like digital strategist to like all of a sudden being like probably more like commercially aware? 
Yeah, so I I was previously working as a, a yeah a senior digital strategist um, at an agency, and in that role I was doing both hands on and strategy. So um, I would manage account, account activity, um, and we also were web builders. So so with that, you know, we I would I would make recommendations that would improve the CMS overall, and not just first for our CMS. Um, that that we had built, but also for if I was working on a client and they had a CMS and it didn't work, then I'd be like, hey, they're devs. And they'd be like, hi. And I'd be like, hello, um, I have some notes and uh, I think you should fix these. And like there was one one platform in particular that was a, a that was a um, a jobs board, for instance. And I looked at this and I was like, y'all are doing this wrong. This isn't OK. <laughs> um, and they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I have notes and these are these are my notes. And then they fixed it for the whole CMS. Um, and then, um, and, uh, and you're welcome. Um, and, uh, and then also, you know, I was also doing things where I was, I would be writing digital strategies. So a client would come to us and they'd say, we, what is our digital strategy? And I literally look at their entire digital footprint across the entire web, um, and, and come back to them with a strategy of, you should do this, you should do that, you should do that. And we do this for, uh, do this for businesses that were starting businesses that had an existing web presence, um, to businesses that were developing apps and things like that. And that was all, that was all very strategic led, um, and stuff, you know, I had one person who was like, we want to do things for consumers. And I was, I was like, y'all don't have enough runway financially to do that. Um, but, but I think you could take the approach that Klarna have, which was, I only found out about Klarna because I'd go to a checkout and there'd be a little thing that said, do you want to use Klarna? And I was like, I was like, y'all should do that because mm -hmm. that don't cost you nothing, but that gives mm -hmm. you tons of visibility. And they followed that and they got loads of funding and blah, blah, blah. So there's, there's lots of stuff there. When I went to, I, along with doing all of that, I was doing like this stuff where I was saying I was talking to Google. So I was talking to Google about the different work that I was doing. I was talking to SEMrush about the work that I was doing. I was talking, um, you know, as a speaking at Brighton SEO about this work and I was, and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, so also building up that comms piece as well. And, you know, again, as I say, all of the, all of the things that you do before build up to this, you know, I was a radio presenter when I was in college. Um, I'd done some performing stuff, um, you know, uh, with like a storytelling things and I did some music things or whatever in, in my time before. So that presentation piece, I had already sort of worked on. It wasn't completely new, um, when I got into that space. So, so when I, when the role came up at Wix, um, that said that they were looking for somebody who, who, you know, had SEO knowledge and was also able to do the comps piece as well. Um, I thought, you know, I'm going to shoot my shot. Like I'm gonna shoot my shot, um, and I think that the other thing is that that particularly for Wix, I had done a lot of working with small businesses and also with larger businesses as well, and and was had also been very active in the the SEO community um, via a number of groups, including the Women in Tech SEO group, which was really great, and mm -hmm. so. I think that it was a really good opportunity to bring all of the skills that I had to to a website builder, which is something that I was familiar with in there. And obviously, Wix is a much, much bigger website builder. You know, we have like 250 million users worldwide, 17 different languages, like many, you know, lo lots of that sort of stuff. Um, so it's a much bigger web builder, but it wasn't completely separate from from what I'd done before. Web, web, you know, building for one website, building for another website is, is very similar. And similarly, like we we work very closely with the product team, myself and Morty Oberstein, who also does a lot of this work. Um, and so if we see something and we're like, hey, this this should be updated because it would be better for everyone, then we can talk to the product team and they'll go, yeah, we can do that. And you know, I've able, been able to do that on the SEO side and on other sides and other parts of the of the CMS, both on Wix Classic and on Wix Studio, which is our new one. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, that's really, really important. Um, and I think that I've been really, really fortunate because the team at Wix are very, um, very forward thinking and they're very, like, very open to new ideas. So if I say, I want to do this, then they're like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's <laughs> do that. That'll be great. Um, so we recently launched a resource center on the Wix SEO Learning Hub, which has like lots of downloadable, downloadable um, assets that you can use and templates and, um, and guides and stuff like that. And we've got another, another drop coming out soon. And that I put together, you know, and this was a little bit of a little bit of a of, a, of my baby there because I, I really want I really like um, templates that are reusable. And I know that for folks who are coming up, folks who are juniors, that that having those kinds of templates can give you ideas that you never even thought about. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that's really, really, um, really important and, uh, and really valuable. And I'm really proud of it. Definitely. That's exciting. If it, if it makes you feel better as well. I've chatted to a lot of candidates recently for the last sort of year and so. 
and they've said how much Wix is coming on and like they're really enjoying it now. So um, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yes, That's cool. Yeah. Um well, you mentioned there about sort of juniors and stuff like that as well. And I know you mentioned about side projects at the start. How important, especially we always sort of pushing people to get on a side project because it really helps you stand out in the hiring process if you can talk about it and stuff like that, like any issues you face or anything you've overcome and stuff like that. Um can you give any sort of tips or ideas of how to get started? I know that's what a lot of people struggle with, like what idea am I going to come up with or what am I going to do to, to sort of get that experience on the side? So I would say like, I would say it should be something that, that you can keep going with and something that you're passionate about. Also, I'd say if you're particularly if you're in the search, the search space, like while, while, you know, I've had people who, who've said, oh, I trained on SEO, but I haven't been able to practice SEO because I don't have a job yet. And I'm like, what? And they're, they're like, oh, but I, I haven't got an internship yet, so I haven't been able to do any SEO. I'm like, start a website. Start a website, fam. Like, start a website. It's fine. Like, we have, you can start a free one on Wix. Um, we have we have very reasonable prices for, for you know, for like a, for, for you know, a, a, a small, small investment or whatever. But you should start a website. If you want to do stuff on search, like learning about search is wonderful, is great, is fantastic. But really... Um, you really need to see live data and see what's going on. And if you can't start your own website, literally just tell anyone, including your mom, that you that you are planning to do uh, SEO or or you want to grow websites or something like that. And they will give you websites. Like your mom will be like, oh, your sister is starting a new thing and she she needs a website or something. You can do that for them. Um, mm -hmm. your, your church, your, your mosque, your synagogue, your temple, whoever, whatever, they will have a website and I'm sure it will need some help. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that you can help help them with that. Um, your, uh, you know, if you're in if you're in a club, if you're in a football club, if you're if you're volunteering for whoever, I'm sure they would happily help have let you help them with their website. So, there are a couple of companies like Seer Interactive is a fantastic company, SEO company in the in the um, our agency in the U.S. and they actively have their juniors work and volunteer on charity websites, on smaller websites, on things like that. And because what it's great to say, I got this certificate, it's even better to be able to say, I got this result, right? Mm -hmm. Because what you, the way I always described SEO is like, SEO is like, is like, like bending the internet to your will, right? That's what it is. You are trying to, you are trying to say, I have this hypothesis and if we do this, we will get that result. And you mm -hmm. need to be able to back that up with data and back that up with, you know, good reasoning and whether, and it, let's say, let's say, okay, maybe you can't do the website right, in, right now. You could do it. You could start with social. It's the same thing. Like social is the same thing. So if you, if you're able to say like, I'm going to drive traffic to this social post, I'm going to increase the visibility for this social post. You can start on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is another way that you can, that you can blog or you can create content or whatever it is. And they have SEO things on there. So they have, you know, you can set your title tags and you can set your H1s and you can embed videos and you can do all of that stuff. So really the barrier to entry is, is very low. Um, in terms of being able to, to show what you're doing. One of the things that um, was, was, really instrumental and i've done this on a couple of occasions so when i got my job um working at the agency um they were like oh be creative right and um and i was like okay so i i did an instagram profile so i i got it wasn't my my it wasn't my normal one i, I made a set i made a specific instagram profile that was my story right it was all the all these different posts and then there were videos in between of going like so then i did this and i did that and like it's a little bit cringe now i've deleted most of the posts now um but 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 it got me the job and it definitely got me through the door and then when i got there um you know i had all of my stuff for my cv but i was like this is also a website that i built and they were like what and i was like yeah i built this website and it was it was like a free theme or whatever but they could see that there was logic and they could see that they could see that you know um, you know, I've got all of the headings and the content makes sense and that these all flow together and these are all linked up and all this sort of stuff. They can see all of that. Um, additionally, when I when I joined Wix, like they they gave me an assignment to do. And, you know, for some of those assignments, you could turn it in on a on a Google Doc or something like that. But I did not do that. I built a Wix website for my assignment. So for my assignment, all of the answers and all of the things that I had to say were on a Wix website. Show, don't tell. Right. And this nope. is something that we we try to do with um, this is something that that I I am all about. It's actually something I learned in my English literature degree. 
um that you know when you're writing show don't tell don't don't go the man crossed the street in the rain like <laughs> like you know like show him like oh he was raining and it was and the rain was pouring down his face as he crossed the street like that's much more engaging similarly mm -hmm. when in wix we try to you know show don't tell show people you know what our websites look like show people how they can use them um, show people why they're why it's valuable for them. When I write articles for the Wix SEO Learning Hub, I don't. Like, there was one I was looking at the other day. It was one for uh, Zapier integration, and we said like, yeah, these are all the things you can do. The this is what the Zapier integration does. We have the Zapier integration, etc. And I was like, and this is how you can use it. If you're doing an event, you can do this. If you're doing that, you can do this. If you're doing that, you can do that. Like so, people know how to get going with with what what they're doing. And if you're showing up in an interview and you have things to show rather than just to tell if you have results that you can show that you know I I got this website and I and I and I migrated these pages to this like maybe I had the church website or whatever and I up and and I migrated it to this new CMS or maybe like maybe the maybe your soccer team or something didn't have a blog and then you started the blog for the for the soccer team or the football team sorry um or whatever it may be then that's something to show and it also shows impetus. And I've spoken to a, a couple of other teams. Like there, I spoke to the SEO for ConvertKit, which is a SaaS product. And they were saying they actively hire people with side projects. Like, and if mm -hmm. you don't have a side project, they're like, well, what? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So I, I think like, and the other thing is, it's a great place to try to trial and test uh, test your um, like hypothesis and test your theories before you like try to put them on, mm -hmm. on paying clients. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think there's also, you know, and I understand like hustle culture is like, I wake up at four in the morning and I do this. I'm not waking up at four in the morning, y'all. That's not, I'm not doing that um, and stuff. But, but, um, you know, you can find something that did that at, at your own pace. I remember I had a recipe blog many, many years ago and I would post every Monday. Like, and I post, like, I, I write up, like I write up a blog, I take some pictures, I post on Monday. And I and I do the do, do the things and being like, oh, I did a recipe blog, and then that would be it. Like, so it did take me like three hours or something like that. But you can get some traffic if you're doing that, mm -hmm. and you can get you know if you if you if you have three hours instead of watching like you know another another episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine or whatever, <laughs> like you know mm -hmm. like get yourself in and and actually actually like do something that will that will add to your skill set and add to and maybe you maybe you love Brooklyn Nine Nine or whatever. Write a blog about that. <laughs> Like just pick something that you that you pick something that you like that you can actually like that you can actually get into and 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 push that. I love the um the growth and abundance mindset that you have to your approach towards things. Um just one last question, I think, just to round it up. Um you've been killing it with the personal branding side of things, just from every project that you've been doing to speaking at events and things like that. Um, I wanted to pick your brain about um, how important personal branding is for um, an SEO, especially within career growth. Um, maybe how has it benefited you? And do you have any advice to SEOs that are maybe hesitant towards personal branding and are looking into it? Um, so I would I would say that personal branding is, is super valuable. Um, I've invested a lot in it. Um, and I think that it is something that can be really, really useful for a lot of reasons. First of all, like your clients will know who you are before you get to the meeting. That's really mm -hmm. useful. And your clients are going to Google you. They're going to look up your, like if somebody's got a meeting coming up with you and they're like, we're meeting with this consultant. And they're like, oh, okay, who's the consultant? And they're like, the mm -hmm. consultant is Crystal Carter. And you're like, oh, well, I'm gonna look them up. They Google you. And I've had this before, like with my personal branding or something, somebody, if somebody's like, Oh, we're doing an event, blah, 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 blah. I was, I was like, oh, did you want me to speak at it? And they were like, they were like, oh, I don't, maybe like stuff. And then he came back five minutes and he goes, and he was like, oh, can I get your details? And I was like, oh, you Googled me, huh? Like you Googled <laughs> me, did you? Yeah. Um, and I think that like the when it's when people can Google you, when people can see see that you're there, particularly as a search engine, as as an SEO, if mm -hmm. they Google you and they see you and you are the number one person for your name, that's that's a win. That shows that you know how to manage that that entity the, the entity that is you online and it's also again this is a sh as a show don't tell um it's also a really good good opportunity to understand more about like how google handles entities you you as an individual that as somebody with a linkedin page are a named entity right and um and and how google understands those is useful for you it's also useful for your client and um and it's really important for you to understand how that works 
Um, I think that it's also it also opens up um, lots of opportunities for collaboration, which can be really useful for SEOs because you you know you're able to get feedback on different things that you do. You're able to say you know find more information about the the work that you're doing. You're able to find new people who can help you with things that you don't know about. Um, SEOs kind of think that they need to know everything, but like you it's impossible to know everything like i'm not a machine learning um i'm not i'm not a machine learning like expert expert i know i know a good amount about a sheet machine learning but like i'm not somebody who's done like a you know a dissertation on machine learning i do know people who have though and if you uh, widen your network and you understand that stuff then when you get to a place where you're like i need somebody who's done a dissertation on mm -hmm. machine learning then you can then it's easier to have those conversations um mm -hmm. additionally um, it can, you know, elevate elevate your brand. It can also elevate the brand of the team that you're working with and all the projects that you're working with. And it can also help you to to move along conversations as well. So, um, so you know, I've been able to. I've been fortunate enough in my in my time as a uh, working in this space that I've been able to elevate other folks um, who I think maybe aren't getting as much shine as they should. And that's been really, really valuable to me. And, and it's been, and I think it helps to keep the industry fresh and helps to keep, you know, new, new folks coming through, which I think is really great because um, new folks have new ideas and that's really, really brilliant. Um, and I think also, also in terms of personal brand, I think it's important. I was talking to someone about this the other day and they were like, oh, all the stuff you do online, like it's so like, I just, you know, it so, shows like so much of your, your personality. I'm like, I'm going to be completely honest y'all right now. It's like, like the stuff that you show online, think about it. Okay. <laughs> like don't show everything online. <laughs> like you know, people don't need to know every single, everything about you online. You can share things that like, like that makes sense to share online. Um, mm. and you want to think about it like, um, you know, you want to think about it strategically. So, so people know me for, for SEO. So I share that kind of stuff. Um, I also like, I like the outdoors, so I share a little bit of that as well, but I think people, a good rule of thumb, I can't remember who said it, but a good rule of thumb is like maybe three things, um, but keep, but, but, you know, something that, something that is obviously related to your personal brand, maybe something that gives you like a, like a personal sort of thing. Um, and then, and then potentially like something that, something that, uh, cuts across because like hobbies are good. So, so, so let's say somebody was like an Arsenal fan or Tottenham fan because I had, I don't have a, I don't have a, a dog in that fight, but like, I know that people do. Um, so let's say they had a team if having having like a you know a hobby that people know that you're you're into is cut is useful because it cuts across a lot of a lot of different things as well um so so that i think is fine but like people don't need to know every single thing that you that you did like they don't need to see a picture of every single like the thing that you ate at yeah. the cafe or you know necessarily so think strategically about what will what will um you know be useful to your audience um and you know mindful of their time <laughs> and um and what will help you to achieve your branding goals awesome wow um a lot to think about i loved um uh the insight into that um yeah thank you um crystal for coming on i know that we hit it a little bit over time i hope that we didn't keep you from your busy schedule but we really appreciate um yeah your insights and um do a lot of fruitful thoughts um, in, within this webinar. I was busy making notes as we were going along. Um, but yeah, um, thank you so much for coming on and we hope to chat very soon again. And uh, yeah, um, I will be releasing a newsletter with our highlights and things like that. So if you want to catch Crystal, find her on LinkedIn or anything like that, um, the newsletter will be coming out soon. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on and have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Cheers, Crystal. <laughs> Cool.